The GI division here at UMass um, is changing like much of healthcare in the United States is changing. And as I see it in the future, what's, what's going to happen is that the things that we do uh, will become even more subspecialized. And so we're trying here to develop some of the newer techniques and particularly uh, we've uh, emphasized some technical aspects of the things that we do and we've put a very strong emphasis on uh, developing new types of procedures, new types of equipment that we think will help to push um, our profession to uh, new heights. One of the things uh, specifically that we're interested in is studying the small bowel. 20 years ago the small bowel was a, a 20 foot GI organ that we knew about but couldn't see. We could only see it with an x-ray. We do get all sorts of things occurring in the small bowel. It's a site of uh, what we call obscure bleeding, little superficial blood vessels that bleed intermittently but can require a lot of blood transfusion. About 10 years ago the, the pill camera was invented and with that we could see the images in the small bowel so this 20-foot structure that we couldn't see for many years we suddenly were able to visualize. The pill cam allows us to do things that really weren't possible pre-2001. We had to rely, we did have CAT scans, uh, we did have barium studies which allowed for visualization in rather primitive terms of what was going on in the small bowel. We could look for Crohn's disease, we could look for polyps, you couldn't really see where bleeding was coming from. So the pill cam allowed us to start to see these uh, sites where bleeding was coming from. I think that we've been at the cutting edge uh, in terms of developing and understanding new devices to image the small bowel and then as an offshoot of that and sort of a logical progression we've tried to be on the cutting edge in developing new instruments for treatment of those diseases. We have three different types of enteroscopes which all basically do the same thing. They're long scopes fitted with overtubes and by various devices on those overtubes, you can concertina the intestine back over the scope. So instead of pushing and getting loops, we can pull in a concertina fashion the intestine back and get much, much deeper into the small intestine. You know, some of the things that we do here um, that I think is, is unique, um, um, especially in the, the population of uh, patients who have obscure um, GI bleeding, uh, of which a lot of them are in the small intestine. We're very aggressive with the uh, video capsule endoscopy um, and often finding uh, bleeding uh, in the small bowel uh, fairly quickly. And then we have set up uh, kind of mechanisms that we can, one of us, either myself, uh, Dr. Cave or Dr. Bhattacharya, can go ahead and do either a deep enteroscopy, anterograde, or do a retrograde deep enteroscopy in order to try to fix that uh, bleeding. Endoscopy is, is used uh, in patients who have gastrointestinal bleeding, for example, to help us localize. Uh, we work very closely with our gastroenterology colleagues to try to localize where is the bleeding coming from? Is, is it coming from the upper portion of the gastrointestinal tract? Is it coming from the lower portion? And then as a result of evolution of both the surgical technology and the endoscopic technology, when we talk about small bowel neoplasia or small bowel bleeding, um, occult gastrointestinal bleeding, we now have a marriage of these two fields coming together and really creating a unique symbiosis where the gastroenterologist, such as Dr. Cave and, and myself, can work together and really bring a cure to patients who previously were in, unable to uh, have their problem solved. You know, so I think by nature gastroenterologists tend to be collegial but I think uh, this is a particularly uh, special group that works really well together. We have Dr. Cave, who's a renowned expert in video capsule endoscopy, and he has a number of protocols um, regarding GI bleeding uh, that will ultimately result in publications and hopefully change the way we practice. Going forward, we have to become cutting edge in terms of managing our resources, in terms of uh, utilization um, and quality. And that's a big push within the country, but certainly within our GI division. And so we have several um, act activities where we are sort of uh, measuring our quality metrics as well as our utilization uh, of endoscopic uh, resources. And I think that will position us well in the future.
One of the things that I have uh, said over many years is that it was that as gastroenterologists we were very predictable. Our mission was was very clear. That's changed dramatically over the last several years. I think that health, the way that we provide health care in the United States is changing, and I think that if we want to be at the cutting edge of that, we need to change the way we do things. The patient comes first, and we're always looking for new, safer, better, uh, and often, if we can now, because of the cost of health care, in less expensive ways of delivering uh, optimal health care.